Hello, it's Jesse here, and welcome back to Jesse's Vintage Garage. And we're gonna we're working on the Norton Mark III seal, and this is getting close to the end. Uh, we just got done uh, doing the exhaust and some other miscellaneous uh, parts throughout in the last video. So in this video here, we're gonna work on the ignition system, and then uh, this will probably be the whole video will probably be about the ignition system and getting it ready for the next step. Otherwise, um, we're gonna be installing a tri spark for Norton. And uh, we're getting the bike kind of set up a little bit, getting ready to put it on, and then we're going to talk about the actual tri spark here. Tri spark changed their ignitions. This is the newest version. Now they are, the part number has changed, and it's just called the classic twin now. You used to have to buy the classic t twin for either Triumph. Or you had to buy it for Norton BSA um, for anti-clockwise and clockwise. Now this one does both. Uh, so they made some sort of internal change and now it's only one unit and they say it's even better than the other ones. So and they made this change in September of 21 and um, so anyway this is the newest one. This is what we're going to use. I got the older version in my white bike and in my black 74 and they work wonderful so um, <clears throat> let's get started first thing we're doing is rolling it up on compression it doesn't matter which cylinder you bring up on compression you gotta you gotta bind it up on compression then you roll it over until we get um, Now we're going to also check because I got a service tool here. We're getting close. There it is. We're getting real close. See that V's got to line up with that V. And there's a spot over here on a Mark III. Now you can put this in. And you said that. Uh, what did you say had to line up? Just making sure I got that right. The V. In the in the window, there's a there's a notch in the window. Okay. See the notch in the window? Yeah, there's a. And then the, the rotor has a V in the center of the pad. You look you you. You're saying V? It looks more like a line to me, but. Well. <laughs> but maybe it is it's kind a of. Groove. It's Maybe it's a V shaped or. It's a groove. Pointed shape. Okay. It could be a V. And it doesn't have. To, oh, I'm wait a minute. There's a little mark right there next to the. It's the, right. It's right here. Yeah. This is a pad. I was thinking that little. That V is, we got to line up this mark with this V. That little notch, there's a V-shaped notch there. I see it now, so. Yeah, okay. Only Mark 3s have that notch. Mark 2s and others don't have it. That's why so, I'm probably, that's probably why I'm like, wow. <laughs> so, okay, so now I'm going to okay. turn this over, and you tell me when that lines up. Okay. Right there, right, a little real close. Right there. Well, it's not quite. Okay, so the timing mark is off. You're right on the 30 line. It looks like you're right on the line. Okay, well, now we know. See, because if you go over the other side, there is a groove in the crankshaft where you put this service tool in. And you put this in, and you get it close, and you it doesn't rotate I back it up a little see now you come forward until it falls in now we're we're locked into there that's that's full advanced timing so this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is correct that window is a little off and almost all the Norton windows are off a little bit but you never know how much well, with the Mark III, you know, yeah, because it has that. That's another feature for the Mark III. Yep. So now we're going to put... And then when you take that off, there's like a little plug you put in there, or what? Yeah, there's plugs up on the, on the oh, chair. Oh, so that little... That's an adapter thing for that, that thing. That little tool comes and this, out. This 
Now, plug. Plug. Okay. In. Gotcha. So now the next step is. Huh. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so what we need to do is for counterclockwise, we got to mark the engine casing adjacent to the line on the outer rim of the stator and then remove the stator unit then install the rotor with its magnets in line with that so what what they're telling us to do is put this on here we need we're going to move a pencil do we have a pencil let's, uh, not in here let's find a pencil Okay. Now we put this in the center of the window. That looks pretty center. Looks pretty close. Maybe a little bit to the right. Yeah. Sure. Then it falls out. Yeah. Does that look better? Yeah, maybe. Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks a little better. Much more center. Maybe don't sound real precise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need both of them put in. We're just going to snug it there. Okay. Now, the book says. To mark it to the anti-clockwise. See how that line is? Yeah, it's this brochure. This, thing this is for the Triumphs. This is for the Nortons. And Does it, say, it doesn't say Triumph on here anywhere or Norton on here anywhere? Well, mark the engine casing with well, I know clockwise. Well, you know, I know that you know clockwise is one and counterclockwise is a different one. But Yeah, yeah. So the but three, well, I'm sure this other page tells it, us all about it. Okay, yeah, there's more to it, I guess. <laughs> Oh yeah, right there. It uh, Royal Enfield Interceptor Two, sixty-eight Norton Atlas, and Triumph Unit Construction Twins take the clockwise. The anti-clockwise is Norton Commando, BSA Unit Twins, BSA Unit Singles, and Triumph Unit Singles. Mm -hmm. So, and this is the Norton. So this is what we're doing. I skipped to this because, well, yeah, you already I didn't need to know that. I, we probably should have showed it. Okay, so now we need to mark this line. Right there. Does that look right? Yeah. Okay. This one. It's on the, the rotor. The rotor. Yeah. And they give you two bolts because some motors have a different thread. Some of them have cycle thread, and some of them have uh, don't. Yeah, so cycle thread would be like 26 threads per inch, right? Right. Yeah, and then typically here in the United States we have. Fine and, and coarse, SAE. Um, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> 24 thread and, and 18 like that on a bolt like that, right? Right. So you find which one you're looking for. It's not this one. It's this one. Okay. Yeah, so what we'll do is I. That one. I think it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> the 
This probably fits earlier triumphs or maybe all triumphs, I'm not really sure. Now it's pretty important too that we know how far in that this threads. So let's test that first. In case the bolt's too long. Yes, we had that on a Boyer on a Triumph where this bolt was way too long and we had to shorten it. Oh, yeah. Well, we will not have that trouble with the Norton. Look at that. It screws, goes all the way in. screws all the way in, and we will definitely not be all the way in. And plus, we got a washer. There we go. And we'll set this in here. I noticed that that rotor had threads in it. What was that for? That's for this big bolt. If we get it in here and we find that we got to move it, you just pull it out of its out of its. Oh, uh, like a removal tool. Yep, it's okay. a removal tool. I'm gonna get a. That's not quite right. Okay. I need to get it in. In line. Okay. But if we're off a little, we'll have to pull it to move it. We won't know that till we get it hooked up. They say you should be in line with the Norton. Is that how's that looking? Looks like it this one needs to come down a little. Oh, yeah, I think so. Oops, too much. Let's turn this in a little. Because it's falling out. There we go. It should be in line with the Norton. How's that looking? Um, bring it up again. Looks, looks like the left part of it, the one, yeah, up a little bit. Let's go down. I felt it move. Your fingers covered. There we go. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's it. Looks like pretty close. Yeah. And we'll call it good there. There we go. About ready to tighten it up. Or what are we gonna do? I'm gonna hold the brake. And I'm gonna tighten this up. Because we don't want the motor to move, and I don't want to hurt the timing tool. Right. I think we'll pull it out. <clears throat> we can put it back in. Okay. Oh, not that. This. See if the motor moved. Still looks like it's in line. Yeah, I think so. I mean, pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. Okay. If anything, now the the back one might be up just shade. And if, like I said, if it, it's off a little bit, then you can always adjust it. But yeah, I think it's there. Okay, now well, they tell us also that we should have this plastic piece here. And we should have 2 millimeter plus or minus 0 0.06. Those are the pickups for what that. Yeah, you don't want it to rub. Actually, the pickups in that. You don't want it to rub this. Right, and that's the. Yeah. Signal senders. <laughs> I'll call it that. Right. 
Probably should put one of these in the trident of the trident too, shouldn't we? What's that? Should probably put one of these in the trident probably. Yep, I got one. I'll probably do that coming up. I probably should put one in the tiger. That's what I meant to say, but I said trident. Oh, but yeah, your tiger really. <laughs> your your eight fifty needs it. Oh yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna put this in here, and this should fit in there. And it does. I can move it, see? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Here's the one and a half. They say point five, point six. Oh, I got, pl I got room here. Yeah, I got... We're real close to the... I get on the... <laughs> Let's get away from that magnet. Well, what if it was off? Would you have to, like, shave the back end of that rotor or what? Yeah. right there it's right exactly at two it's got a little bit of play just a little hmm. so I'm happy with that and the cam probably moves a little bit so that's why I had the clearance anyway yeah that exactly but if you get it too far away they don't like to run so the next step would be to put this back in place. We can't tighten it until we get it powered. Well, we can't power it until we get the wires all hooked up. But we know we should be something like this for starting. They'll tell us to turn it all the way one direction first and then turn on the key. And then rotate it till then you rotate it till this little red light comes on, just comes on. Then you tighten it down, and you should be within one degree or two degrees or something within perfect timing. Lots of times I've started them up with a timing light later, and I didn't have to move it. So depends on how well you do it. So the next step now is going to be hooking all this up. So, so. <clears throat> so let's check for inflow and uh, the only way we could really check for inflow right now is to somehow release all the cam um, valve <laughs> you know you can't so the time to do this would have been when we had the cylinders off and the cam was free floating, and then we could have done done that. But right now we can't push on the other side of the cam because it's inside the it's inside the cases. Yeah, it's all and we got up. valve pressure. I'm sure there's a <laughs> valve or two open right now, maybe three open right now. So yeah, we can't do it. We're just gonna have faith that it's that it's right. And, Way I did with all the rest, and they've been fine. Okay, so, do a bunch of wiring. Yeah, wiring too. Now we got to cut these wires off, and we got to have to terminate them like black and white, black and yellow, and then the red one goes behind one of these pillar bolts. See here. It's for a triumph, but yeah, it probably don't matter. Don't matter. Positive ground. Yeah. If it's, it's true, a negative they're, they're ground positive. like my 79 Bonneville, then you got to go to a different part of the manual and start over. There's, there's, a, there's a part in here where they talk about, somewhere in here they talk about negative ground. Oh, yeah. Negative earth. So... See, then you put the black and yellow wire to ground, and then the red wire goes up, out with one of them wire. It, probably the black and yellow one here becomes the red wire. So 
Well, we're not doing that. <clears throat> That's not we're yeah, doing that. track. But we yeah, got, we got positive ground. So. All right, we're gonna get ready for the next step here. I don't want them too long, but I don't want them too short. This one, I can leave myself here. Almost hate cutting them off. Before I begin, I might want to get a, I have this feeling that what I want to do, I'm going to back up here a little bit. I want to put a piece of heat shrink around both of these so that vibration don't break these wires. That's something else I do. I up getting cut by that plate. Yep. It doesn't get a sharp area and then all of a sudden one day you're driving along and you're cutting out on one cylinder or both and kills it and you can't figure out why. Like right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this out and I wanna put a piece of heat shrink right there. Because we're gonna heat shrink some of these wires anyway. That way it, this heat shrink will bend. I'm going to keep them straight. There we go. Keep that cool. Done deal. And it gives it a little extra insulation. Now you also got to make sure you have a loop back here. You got to have this loop like this. You can't run them tight. If you don't, if you run that tight, because this motor shakes up and down, it's on rubber. So you got to have a loop in here. Um, so that's important. There, look at that. Now we can just bend that over. See, isn't that nice? Yeah. I think I want to use their washers. They're nicer and oh yeah, not used and might be the right size to fit better. Well, <clears throat> those feel real sharp. And... Well, I'm going to compare. No, no, they didn't look. These look radius. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. I think that's what these are for discard the others and use these okay there's the other one there it is okay now up on the top the red wire has got to go in here yeah a couple of fittings. We got strips of wire. There wasn't a lot of the one wire loose. There we go. Nope. Yep.
need my other wire stripper. one or you'll oh, cover through cut wire to not everything because it goes all the way through that, this one's more of a feel <clears throat> okay now you tell us to put these on there the bullets bullets right up here right follow that line so what I do is I put the point right in the middle of that um, wait a minute I need no interference we go in a little ways Find that line right up with the point, so that way I crush it right down in there and get it good. Just like that. Solid. It will go over it. Okay, good. I was there thinking, I was starting to, okay. See, I heard it click. I was starting to think, like, um, <laughs> hopefully they do the right It stuff. does go. Man, I see you all just got to play around with the plastic a little and get make sure it's not caught under it. Yeah. You know, it's like a, a seal or whatever, like I said. Yeah. There it goes. There yeah, it there goes. It there it went. Okay. okay. Now we're not going to worry about this yet, but what we'll do eventually, we will make sure this lays nice and down in here like that. But we're going to have to turn it and watch this light. Okay, so we're done down here. Okay, so it says the connecting the coil wire on a positive earth machine. So it says the black and white wire should be connected to a negative terminal on the closest coil or the most convenient coil. Black and yellow wire should be linked to the switched ignition wire. And in our case, that's this, that's this white and yellow wire right here. So our black and yellow goes to that. And that will, that will, that will, uh, that will make our ignition live. And the needle knows to push that in. And uh, this wire may, may vary in color depending on the model you're hooking up with but uh so make sure you just refer to your di wire diagram to for the correct location for the switched wire at the ignition switch i tested what you don't see offline is that i already tested this a long time ago when we tested the, the ignition system there it goes okay so that's that's done that now, up. You probably this is that. this is going to be a ground wire is going to come out of here and it's going to go to that 
it's we got to get a grounding earth and it's going to go from here down to a coil um, and then the other one we got to have a jumper wire from one to the other so we got to make a couple wires here uh, real quick here for it so there's our jumper wire we're going to make or um our, our pigtail or whatever we're going to call it so it's going to be coming out of that bullet and then going to one of the, the terminal on this coil we're going to use ring type uh, fittings or electrical fittings because we really like putting them on these little terminals that have the nut because they they tighten up um, and then they don't move or go anywhere and they don't fall off. I've had a bunch, <laughs> I had a bike that always seemed to like the little spades always fell off and it just drove me crazy so then I just avoid the spades lately. <laughs> so don't we? Yep, I do up here because that way if we have a problem we can disconnect instead of crimping and and i just yeah I, I so just, yeah using the bullet it's I'm, better for I'm, that i'm gonna use bullets i'm working on making our pigtails and we're gonna work on making a jumper wire here we need that crimper oh okay Negative coil, negative side of the coils right here. I don't really want them up out there. I'd rather have them under here. Is it going to be long enough to go there? Yeah, I think it will be. I don't like it out there because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be better off tucked in. Tucked out of the way. Yeah. Need to get a wrench that size. Okay. So in the book here, it talks about uh, the jumper wire. It doesn't really matter what um, color you got. You're going from negative to positive here on the jump. And yeah, so we're gonna use. I don't. You're using. You're. Here where we're using like a black and white wire, but I can matter. use a black and white or solid or whatever. Or I can use a black and yellow. It don't really matter. I can use the black and yellow. That's how we're not using it for nothing else. This is the other hookup, isn't it? I'm making this one. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, it might just be in two rings, right? Yep. Yep. I 
nice twist my wires. Crunch where I wanted it to crunch, which is good. Hmm. There we go. And it will. It is good. It is solid. I don't like to solder these because solder runs up the wire and it can make it brittle and then they break, break off with vibration. I also like to use this because that helps stabilize and keeps it from, it helps vibration also. Oh, I gotta put this on. Forget to put this on first. There we go. Oh yeah, you gotta eat that out good. <laughs> there we go. You're getting it wired up, looks like already. So got I got the, the jumper in. Yep. Jumper's in here. I can't run it over there because the coil, well, I might be able to. If I put the lock washer on the other side. See, the problem with it is there's an indent in the coil. Oh, like for the terminal to sit yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's an indent. The, See it? The fitting. Yeah. See, it's a recessed area. Yep. And I don't know if I put the lock washer at first and then the fitting. I might try that. If I'd like it on the other side of the coil, I could. Yeah, we definitely don't want the wire getting caught in that spring or anything. Well, no, and I can, I'm going to run it differently. I, it's not hooked here yet. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. in there. We got 
keep it away from the spring. There we go. We got we're not done there yet. We got to bring a red wire down. So. Oh, that is right. Yep. We're working the last wire up here, I believe. This is the red oh, wire. Open it. Oh yeah, smaller. Um, it's a red wire for the other terminal of the other coil. It should be a positive terminal. Is that what it is? <laughs> That's supposed to be where I looked. Oh, you're assuming it was. Yep, it sure is. It's yeah. got a plus sign there. Positive. So I knew yep. it was anyway. <laughs> All right, I think I got it tight enough. I don't want to do anything weird to the coil, so. Yep. I got to run that up and plug into the other bullet here. Or the other... Uh, Connector, I mean, with the bullet. There it is. Here we are. So we can take these. some of this stuff on here. This is called spiral wrap. That's why they call it that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's just like a quick loom. You make your yep. own loom yep. wire out of it. And it and it helps for for chafing and stuff like that, as they call it. Yeah, and it's clean looking too when it's all yeah. done. That bullet's messing with me. Probably could have, uh, probably. Normally, you know, I have bullets in the middle. Mm -hmm. way down here so I can get on the other side of the bullet there we go <laughs> guess I should have just did it this way okay now got this pulled up that. Yeah, there we go, just like that. Might be too long, that's okay. A little short, but this way this stuff can lay around all the cables and it can rub on the tank and it can do all kinds of stuff and not hurt the wire. And because of this bullet here, it won't move either. Yeah, hold it nice and tight, yeah. Yep, it'll hold it tight because it's stretching around it pretty good. But this is long enough up here to where it'll go all the way up and not 
So it goes all the way around the wire. Nice. Yep, perfect. Hmm. There, like that. This can come out there like this. And we can we can lay this up in here like that. And we can just wire tie this up here. And it can just lay there. It'll be just nothing will bother it. And it's not it's not gonna hang it up. Uh, nothing's gonna get it out of its way. It'll look good. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then it'll be good. I got a wire tie to there and wire tie to there. And it'll it'll be just where we want it. So after getting that spiral wrap on and getting everything hooked up here, we rotated the coils just a little bit so that it left a little bit less uh, tension on the, on the wires here and they weren't crisscrossing and stuff so much. But everything else so clears yet, so in case the motor moves a little bit when it runs, which it will, a little bit, um, there won't be banging anything. So, all right, so now we're ready for the next step here on this. All right, so after getting that uh, loom all spiral wrap all wrapped around that, we moved the coils just a little bit because we didn't want the, the wires to be bound a little bit and tight because they were kind of were and crisscrossing each other. So there's a little bit of movement here. Yeah, and we didn't want any tension on the wires too. We kind of wanted them loose after we after we wire tied it. So up. with rotating the coil a little bit, we still are clearing everything in case the motor jumps around, which it will kind of a little bit, but. Um, we're getting ready to go on to the next step, which is yes. setting up the um, the unit down here. And it's very important that you put plugs in and and make sure they're touching or grounded somewhere because this unit will try to fire the coils. And it's hard on the coil not to have it complete the cycle. It'll try to arc the spark inside a coil, and that's not good. It'll short them out. So... With that all in mind. Yeah, we're going to put this and set it up just like this procedure book says. It comes with a tri-spark. And then we'll have to revisit it once it's running. Yeah, right? because it says you got it. says here you begin by turning clockwise in the slots. Rotate it anti-clockwise to the position where the red light on the stator just comes on. Tighten up the pillar bolts. Shut off the switch on the ignition. This procedure... Sets the timing within a, just a couple of degrees of the final setting. The timing should be confirmed with a strobe light before riding. Yeah, so once we get this all moved and we get to where the light turns on, like he said, if we go to the other side of that window, we'll probably see that it's not quite on, but, like it, but that's how it's set up. So, anyway. Okay, so we're going to turn on the key. And we are going to turn this back just a little bit at a time. Make sure the pillar bolts aren't too tight. A little bit. There it goes. I heard it. I heard the... Yeah, I heard the... Heard the spark plug. We heard it. I don't know if it... Yeah, I heard the spark plug spark. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to make sure I'm not off too much here. Right. Call it there. And then we had that pin in the bottom there yep, too. Yeah, pin is about. in. Pin is in the mark. We saw that earlier. We're gonna. We're done with that now, right? Yep, we're, we're all up. done. Now we're gonna tighten up the pillar bolts, like they say, and we should be in pretty much in the center of the slots too. Oh, we're pretty yeah. close. So the slots here on the on the on the so we got pillars. adjustment room. Yeah, and then our. Our line should line up too. Our line over here on the anti-clockwise should line up pretty close. Yep, it's right there. Shut the key off. All right, and at this point we can put the cover on. And then we gotta switch out that, that plug down there too where your pin is. Yes. Put this on. Yeah, this goes on a certain way. I leave these wires out so they touch the cover and the cover pushes it so that way there's less vibration of wires bouncing around yeah. when it's running. This cover does have a, a little drain hole on it too. but 
Yeah, that goes yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, so this trace spark's a lot, I mean, a lot different than the, the Boyer ignition um, that we could have probably put in here. Uh, this is more user-friendly for a Mark III compared to what... We had a little discussion with the Boyer earlier because we had a comment on a different video um, we were talking about. And with this tri spark, I think we talked about this before in the beginning, it's anti-backfiring. Also, right? It, it has a, a anti-kickback feature. And kickback is the same as, in a way, is the same as a backfire. Because if you're kicking it over and, it, and it, it'll go kapoop, and then it kicks back, that's a backfire, really. But it, it's while you're kicking. So if you think about it, it's the same thing as backfiring. Now, boyers will backfire or kick back all the time. And if you're trying to use the electric starter and it does that, that can be bad for the sprag. Now this plug gets an aluminum washer and it's just a plug that goes in there and fills the hole and keeps it from leaking. Yeah. And so you just put that in and tighten her up. Yeah. I got that one and we got to the, put the plug on the other side too. And we just popped that plug in, and I guess this kind of comes to the end on the TriSpark here. This was a pretty interesting, informative video, and uh, so I guess we're going to come to an end here. So I hope you enjoyed everything, and we'll be finishing up the spike on the next video most likely, and we'll maybe take it for a test drive. So we'll see you again soon.